Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to explain a few fundamental concepts of physics, Newton's three laws of motion. So let's dive right in. First, we'll start with, well, Newton's first law of motion. This law states that an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Okay, let's unpack this a bit to see what it means. First, an object at rest stays at rest. This seems to make the most intuitive sense because, for example, if you have an apple just sitting at rest on a table, obviously it's just going to sit there until something happens to it. But wait, isn't there a force acting on the apple? Isn't the force of gravity pulling the apple downwards? So why isn't something happening with the apple? Well. The important thing to note is the phrase unbalanced force, because although the force of gravity is acting on the apple, this force is completely balanced by the force of the table pushing back up on the apple, which keeps it at rest. However, if we were to get rid of the table and the apple were at rest above the ground, the force of gravity would no longer be balanced and it would fall to the ground as we would expect. As for the second part, an object in motion stays in motion, if we were to have a rocket moving through space with absolutely no forces acting on it, it will keep going at the same speed and in the same direction forever and ever until some force starts to act on it. And although this law can be a mouthful, it can be summed up with one word, inertia, which is the tendency for an object at rest to stay at rest and an object in motion to stay in motion. All right, next, we have Newton's second law, which states an object's acceleration is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and inversely proportional to the object's mass. So I know this one is also pretty wordy, but these relationships of acceleration, force, and mass can be summed up by this equation. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. Force and acceleration are directly proportional so if the net force applied increases, so does the object's acceleration. And if the force decreases, the acceleration also decreases. Which makes sense. If you were to push an object harder, aka increase the force applied, you'd be able to move the object faster than if you only pushed it lightly. Next, mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. So if the mass of an object increases, the acceleration of it would decrease for a certain applied force. Then if the mass decreases, the acceleration would increase. And this kind of makes sense too. If you tried pushing a massive boulder, you wouldn't be able to move it as fast as you would be if it were only a small rock. And if you don't recognize this equation now of acceleration equals force divided by mass, you may recognize it in a more commonly used form of the almighty equation F equals MA. And finally, we have Newton's third law. This one says that for any action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Essentially what this means is that any action comes in the form of a pair of equal and opposite forces. So when you go to smash that like button under this video, that downward force you apply to click the mouse is opposed by an equal force by the mouse pushing back up on your finger, which is what you feel. Additionally, when a rocket launches to space, it applies a super strong force downward by its engines, which is opposed by an equal force upward that blasts the rocket into space. So those are Newton's three laws of motion, which form the basis for so much of the physics that you will soon learn. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel to see more of our content. And if you have any questions, please let us know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.